All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. Uh, today we're doing a video. Um, I, we've been getting a couple comments on how investing is just gambling, and that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, so we're going to talk about how that's dumb and also how your savings account is actually losing you money. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys enjoy this kind of entertaining stock market content, please consider giving us a like and subscribe below. But that will get to it. Two stupid guys trade stocks. All right, I love that intro. I know. I will say, I love that intro, and I love cash is trash because cash is trash. It really <laughs> is, except for maybe right now, but yeah, on occasion. Uh, so, uh, Vinny, this has spawned, uh, we've gotten multiple comments, mostly during our AMC videos, because AMC is a great investment, right? Um, how all investing is gambling. Uh, what? And how basically it's all pretty much luck. How do you feel about that? I absolutely hate that sentiment. Uh, investing is about taking calculated risks to ensure your money's continued growth. Calculated risks. This isn't yeah. Yolo, Yolo Ville over here, okay? This is calculated risks. You know, there, there was a, a, a quote where someone was talking to Warren Buffett about investing, and uh, he told them they were thinking about it wrong. It's you don't think about how it can go right; you think about how it can go wrong. That's 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 the what you're minimizing downside potential. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I kind of need more of that. But so the game we're looking at right there is blackjack. Um, for those of you who don't know, blackjack has a 51% chance of winning for the casino, 49% for um, uh, the person, and then it just gets worse and worse from there. Roulette's like one of the worst ones. It just keeps on going. Uh, that three, I think it starts with the K, uh, the three card game. I don't remember what it is. I don't know. Um, but regardless, uh, casinos make money um, statistically on every single game. Um, whereas statistically, if you just put money in the spy, you get a 10% return. So I don't know how these are in any way the same. Um, I don't know. I guess that person's an idiot. We've had like 50 of these comments. So yep. I, I don't even know how to have a conversation about it because it's just, it's, just, it's just wrong. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I know. Try to keep an open mind. Try to like coax and educate, but it, it, it drives us more towards uh, extremism and uh, elitism. At, at the more times we interact with uh, these folks, unfortunately, it's just like it's just it's just a fact. Like I don't even. Oh my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> we're not going to harp on this. Um, I'm, this graph is just to show you inflation's a lot, right? We've done a bunch of videos. We don't want to waste your time. It's just important for the next step. So obviously, boom, inflation. It's a lot. Yeah. Why does it matter? Dylan. Why does it matter? So I'm assuming if you're not investing um, uh, and you're not going to the casino, which is an even worse thing, um, that is in a savings account. That would be the most logical place for it. Granted, a lot of these people are logical, whatever. Um, so if you had $10,000 put into your savings account in the year 2000, just because of inflation and normal inflation, um, that's the equivalent of $15,588. So you actually lost 56% of the value on your money Man. just from not touching it, right? Yep. 2010 goes up to $12,310. Uh, you lost 23% of the value in your $10,000. This is not your $10,000 is turning into that number. That's, that, that's what the equivalent is now. So yeah. you're just hemorrhaging money. Yeah, lost purchasing power. Lost purchasing power. There you go. You're so smart. All right. Uh, 2015 goes to 11,032. Just keep clicking. 13% value loss. And this is just one year. This is one year because the, the crazy inflation, 5% of the value lost. Exactly. We make 10% a year on the SPY. That's 5% in one year you lost on inflation. Yep. <laughs> so... If you had invested that in the spy, i.e. gambling, I don't know how to react. Um, if you done it, it did in the year 2000, you made 28 grand, 500. If you did in 2010, there's actually a lot of negative years in 2000, hence the change, uh, housing crisis. Yeah. And the dot-com bubble. Hmm. Uh, 30,000, 2010. 18,000, 2015. And... 2020, because the crazy returns we're having, you would have already made three thousand two hundred for a total of thirteen thousand dollars on your ten thousand dollars investment. Mm -hmm. and, and 
the highlight, this is this is Dylan is advocating for a market return, just a broad, you know, you put an S&P 500 index fund and you thought nothing about it. Had you actually got, earned a little bit of alpha or if you had been an absolute like baller maverick and thrown 10 grand into Apple back in uh, 2000, uh, yeah, we'd be filming this on a yacht somewhere if I had done that. <laughs> Yeah, that's j j that's a good point. This is not like intense study stocks. This is just the spy. If you put it in Apple, I think you own a plane. Yeah, I, it's over probably three million bucks. I would say at least ten grand. In yeah, but, yeah. And, yeah. And your ten thousand is actually worth like fifty four hundred if you kept it in a savings account. So genius yep. plan. Yeah, great perfect. plan. Yeah, this this is set it and forget it investing. You know, the old Ron Papil like uh, Showtime rotisserie kind of style. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, what are, the, what are the banks doing with your money when you, when you deposit it? Uh, you know, they're, they're taking that, those funds in and they're learning, loaning them out and making, you know, loans with that. That's kind of the old school, you know, thought process. They do a little bit more than that these days. They also are, have their own, uh, investment firms within the company, um, you know, and that sort of stuff. And they're also, you know, packaging and selling mortgages on like MBSs. So they do a lot of stuff, but they're taking your capital and they're earning money with it. You know, that's, that's what it all comes down to is that difference in interest rates, the difference between what they can earn compared to what they have to give you as the depositor. Right. So basically what you're saying is the money that you think is safe, they're investing in it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Weird. 2008. <laughs> Jeez, man. Yeah. They're trusting their investment skills, which, you know, also, and before I get to this part, if if there's a bank that says, hey, we'll give you $200 to open a savings account, why do you think that is? They're not, I don't even know. I'll just move on. It's just so frustrating. Yeah. It's a sticky service. They're trying to get you stuck. Exactly. So times have changed, right? This lady, I'm sure you have seen, and this is nothing against like older people in general. It's like, for instance, my mom's probably one of these. Uh, she says, you got to have a savings account. You got to have all this stuff. I'm just going to point out that uh, people that generation also uh, didn't wear seatbelts, didn't wear sunscreen, uh, routinely smoked, ate trans fat. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. It's possibly the worst thing we have ever invented. So uh, I'm just saying a lot of the things that they were talking about actually made sense for them does not make sense for us. And Vinny's going to tell us why. Yeah, exactly. The world has changed. So this is kind of an old school thought process. A lot of the older folks love is uh, the CD certificate, uh, certificates of deposit. Uh, and basically all it is, is like um, a savings account in which you are locked into a certain period of time. And, you know, you can only withdraw your money every six, 12 months, 10 years, depending on which length you purchased. Um, but Overall, the the actual interest that you're seeing from this stuff has has come down significantly to the point where you're you're basically earning nothing for this. Yes, it's theoretically minimal risk, but you know the the rate of return on this is absolutely nothing, and you're lo losing real purchasing power when you compare it to inflation that we're seeing. You know, yeah, so you actually end up losing money. So yeah. once again, I'm not trying to attack older people. I'm just saying the things that they were doing made sense for them. That's fine. What a 10% return, 1984, just for a savings account. That's awesome. Yeah. We're not getting that now. Exactly. So don't keep your money in a savings account. Mm -hmm. It does yeah. not work. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is something that, that I do. Um, Basically, if you're saying, well, how do you have money then in case something happens? You should absolutely have an emergency fund, okay? And your emergency fund should be dependent on what you spend, your liabilities, and all that stuff. So if you have a house, your emergency fund should be a little bit bigger because if your roof starts leaking, you, sh you need to be able to pay for that, right? That's kind of important. Yeah. Um, if you don't, you don't need a bigger emergency fund. Then I have something that I have in my bank account, what I call checking cash flow. So I look at all the stuff that I end up spending per month and I like triple it. And that's what's in my checking. And then when I get to a certain amount, I move it to my investments. So if I have five grand checking, once I hit 10 grand, I move five grand in. Okay. If you're saving for something, like I'm, I'm saving to buy another house, obviously this changes the rules because I need cash. Okay, but the majority of your your money should be going towards investments. Exactly. 
Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. That that's the whole idea is that you should have an emergency fund that is something liquid, you know, cash preferably or you know savings account kind of stuff uh that should be able to cover a, at least three to six months or so of your expenses is kind of what people say depends on your your own comfort level depends on the industry you work in and how stable your income is and how high your expenses are uh, but overall that that's a good reasonable cushion for most people um, but the, most of your money should be out there working for you earning more money and then this is this is a little bit off topic. It's just one of uh, one of my favorite guys on the on, on YouTube that comments on our stuff. He's awesome. It's Tyler's was it Ty Tyler something? Oh, Ming. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, he had made a comment, and it was actually it was it was a very very good comment based on when he goes to negotiate for a raise. Um, this because of the inflation this year, that whole conversation is going to change. So yeah. like, what's you know, like what's like a typical um, raise in an industry is very dependent on the industry, but in ours, what's ours? I would say like three to five percent, somewhere in that ballpark. So if they give you a three percent raise next year, so like my contract's up in a year and a half, if they give me a three percent raise, they're actually paying me less than what I made the year prior. Yeah, that's a problem. Yep. So now you're going to have to have the balls to go to your boss, be like, look, and bring, bring the charts with you. Inflation was five and a half percent this year. So yeah. if you want to give me a 3% raise, I need eight and a half percent. Otherwise, yeah. you're actually losing money. You're actually working less for what you were prior. Uh -huh. That's tough. My uh, my first three years are scheduled to five percent, a five percent, and a ten percent over the first three years is like what our raise schedule is. So, yeah. oh, is that your your is that a contract? Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, I lost 04 percent of my salary this year despite getting a five percent raise. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm worse. I yeah. have a two year solid contract because of the because it's the a harder industry to get into. Yeah. So I actually don't get a raise. So now when the two years are up. I'm going to be asking for like 12%. Yeah. Like that's, minimum. Yeah. That, that's probably minimum. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So keep that uh, in, in case you guys are going to get employed or have that coming up. Don't be afraid to ask, bring yeah. in on right on the U S federal, like a uh, website. They have the inflation rates, bring that paper in be like, Hey, I deserve more than this. Yeah. I believe Tyler said they were leaving with a 7% raise or or unemployed were there two options. Yeah, that's a badass <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.